Look at these two double A's right here, Akron and Adventuring. And Honkai Star Rail is about to get both of them in the same phase, which is absolutely bonkers. So both the reruns are coming up and you gotta ask the question, should you summon for Akron and Adventuring? Well, it may be obvious what the answer is. I wanna go ahead and still kinda, just humor me a little bit on this, okay? Before we get into that, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to check out Gamer Subs. Use code TYSTRA for 10% off. Y'all, again, I've talked about this in the previous videos. We have the Cupathon going on for Shy Lily this week on my birthday, right? So, if you want to be a part of the festivities for that, make sure to go ahead and check out gamersubs.gg and grab yourself one of Shy Lily's cups and use code TYSTRA for 10% off. But, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive into the four stars of the banners. Now, first one that I want to talk about is Pella, right? And again, we are using Pride Win because Pride Win seems to be the universally um, talked about tier list and everything like that. And we will be talking about the tier list as well, but we won't, it'll be kind of a mixture. So bear with me on that, right? So let's talk about Pella. Pella is great for lowering the defense of the enemies that you deal with. Uh, that's gonna be in her actual uh, uh, ultimate right here. So you want to build her up with a little bit of energy recharge, or not energy recharge, uh, energy regeneration, right? So energy regeneration for the zone suppression, which basically reduces defense for 40% or by 40% for two turns. So Pella is really, really good still. And I think even in the tier list, right? She's still regarded highly. Uh, meta characters right here. She's in the tier one slot and this is for memory of chaos. We look at pure fiction. She's still in that tier one spot and also apocalyptic shadow. She is da -da -da -da, in the tier 1.5. So she is one of the best four stars in the game. I think the only one that like kind of outranks her is Gallagher, but that's on the healing. But when it comes to like support or not support, but amplifier characters, People who basically are, you know, part of Nihility for the most part. Um, I think a majority of Nihility users are going to be in this. But um, for Nihility users like Pella, she's insane as a debuffer. So already I could tell you Pella is always worth it unless you've already got her maxed out. Like you should try to max her out. Uh, so Pella gets a thumbs up from me right out the game. Let's talk about another Nihility user that is not like Pella, and that is going to be Sampo. Now, Sampo is going to be more of your uh, DOT character. You're kind of the original idea of what Nihility was supposed to be, right? Circled around wind damage, being able to do DOT over a uh, course of turns. That's really what his bread and butter is. Now, if we look into where he's at, right? We can get scroll down a little bit. And bear in mind, this is with Memory of Chaos again. We scroll down a little bit. Why can't I not find him? Am I stupid? <laughs> oh, there we go. Right there. He's in the tier three slot. He's niche. So, and, the re and I can kind of see it a little bit because he is ma based around wind. And not only that, but if you look at some of like the characters that we have that are better Nihility users, right? We got Kafka. We got Black Swan. Uh, we got... That's it. When it comes to <laughs> specialists. So, like, I guess you could say he's the he's tied for best Nihility four-star unit in the, uh, you know, I guess the DOT slot, right? So, because we do have uh, Luca right here that's fighting him. I don't know. Sampo, to me, is not that bad. I know that Sampo was regarded as you needed him way back when. But now that we've gotten so many Nihility units, he's kind of fallen by the wayside. He's not a Pella. So, to me, he gets a thumbs down, right? Now, this character, we have to talk about two different ones because we have March 7th, and then, of course, we got March 7th, The Hunt, right? And if you're going to talk about March 7th, you got to talk about both. So we do have, first, the Preservation one, which, as a shielder back in the day, was really, really good. But now that we've gotten more Preservation units, uh, she's kind of fallen down a little bit. Um, but yeah, she basically uh, casts a little doohickey that pulls aggro. Or not pulls aggro, but basically she does the doohickey. And if you would, or if the enemy attacks like another character that has that doohickey on them, March 7th does a follow-up attack. So it's not bad. Like she's okay. You know, uh, back in the day, she was, a, she was a little bit better because there wasn't a lot of preservation. I think back then all we really had was March and uh, what's his name? Uh, Gepper. So yeah, it was kind of like, oh, let's water on me. 
It was kind of like you didn't have a lot of choices. But the hunt, March 7th, is regarded as pretty freaking good, right? Like, she's actually not bad for mainly free to play because once you, like, you could, you get March 7th for free anyway, but you, you have to get the rest of the constellations. These constellations for the hunt March 7th, you have to earn through an event. So she's completely free. So, do, imaginary character right here. Uh, basically doing imaginary damage does three hits with that does 80% of March 7th attack to a single target. Um, after dealing the final hit, she has a 60% fixed chance to deal one extra hit up to max three extra hits. So six hits in general, or like possibly six hits. And the energy uh, regenerated from using enhanced basic attack does not increase the number of this. Uh, enhanced basic attack cannot recover skill points. So that's the only downside to that. And then you got the actual skill that increases like speed. So she's not bad. Now let's take a look at the tier list on where she's at right here. So if we're looking at this. March 7th is in the meta category. She's pretty dang good. And I would have to agree with this placement right here. Uh, but if we look for March 7th as a four star in the preservation field, she's right down there with of course natasha r.i.p r.i.p to them right so but that's only a memory of chaos and pure fiction obviously it's going to be a little bit of a different story she is put down a little bit on that side and then of course she is down to tier four on pure fiction and then apocalyptic shadow freaking she goes to apex characters on this which is pretty crazy i haven't tried her in apocalyptic shadow but maybe i should and of course march 7 goes down all the way to the bottom man Poor Bart 7, poor, poor Bubbly Girl. But overall, I would say, like, just the fact that you get two different types of characters when you get this character is a thumbs up to me, in my personal opinion. So, I would definitely say, like, getting her is a, not a must, but the more of her you get, the better. So, we'll just say that. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the first of our two, Aventurine. Man, I love adventuring and it's 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 the character it's his eyes it's his story adventuring's really freaking cool but adventuring is considered one of the best preservation units in the game if not the best right um i have a i have a thing for fushuan being better because i like uh, damage mitigation more that's just personally my preference but adventuring we cannot deny that he is just that dang good he does a lot of imaginary damage. Most of his damage is based off of his own defense. Uh, when an ally hits an un unnerved enemy target, her damage dealt increases by 15%. So he's bo boosting, up, blah, 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 boosting up your crit damage. Um, really based around his defense, which is good. That's what he, that's what he needs, right? So Aventurine is considered one of the best units. And it shows. So we go Memory of Chaos first. Boom. Right top tier, right next to Huo Huo. Fushua, just right below him. Pure Fiction, same thing. Aventurine, right there. Fushuan, just below him. Apocalyptic Shadow, boom. Aventurine's right there. Fushuan, two slots down. Now, again, I like Fushua a little bit more, but I can't deny how good Aventurine is. He is considered the best pr preservation unit. Speaking of the best at something, right? Let's talk about the best Nihility unit, and that is Akron. My God, were they cooking with Akron? From her kit, to her animations, to the damage, to her look. God damn, she eats peaches, but I'd eat her peach. You know what I'm saying? Akron is absolutely stupid busted. One of it, one of the best units in the game. Like, bar none. Like, you, you don't even need me to even talk about this that much, but I'm still going to. Look at all these different damages. Like, Rainblade three times on her ultimate. The first one does 372. Uh, and lightning damage up to 300. Uh, Rainblade again, 24%. And then does 15%. And then 60%. It's insane. What, like, this is just absolutely bonkers, like, the amount of different percentages on there. Like, she's so complicated, but not at the same time. Basically, all I do is I just hit the space bar with her because she clears everyone, right? <laughs> so, it's just absolutely bonkers to me, right? So, let's go ahead and just take a look at where Akron is. Akron on the tier list for Memory of Chaos is at 0. 0.5, which makes sense. Um, I would even put her up there with, uh, um, Fei Zhao, to be honest. 
like I would personally. Fear Fiction, she's up there again at the 0. 0.5. And then of course we see Apocalyptic Shadow, she's back at the 0. 0.5. She's just that dead good. She is, for all intents and purposes, considered an Apex uh, unit for a reason. And she's really freaking good. Honestly, when it comes to this banner in general, this banner, this is a must summon. Like, I think if you are a Honkai Star Rail player and you do not have Akron or Aventurine, you need to summon for both of them because they are just that good. Plus, you get really good units in March 7th, uh, The Hunt and Pella. Sampo, not so much, but like overall, this banner is the best bang for your buck in general if you're spending money, right? Even if you're not spending money and you have your free to play, this is the time. This is the perfect time to do it because these characters are not going away anytime soon my personal opinion but that's gonna be it for today's video like comment subscribe don't forget to check out the ever wonderful sponsor gamer subs use code tyson for 10 percent off and of course let me know are you gonna be summoning for akron adventuring i definitely want to know in the comments down below so anyways y'all that's gonna be it love you to death and as always we'll catch you in the next video please take care and be safe